Hello, how you doing? Ever wondered how a single floppy disk could lead to the capture of one of America's most notorious serial killers? Stay tuned to find out. I'm thrilled to announce the launch of our new video series on real-world digital forensics and dark web crimes case studies. As someone who has delved into the world of digital forensics, I found that learning about real-world cases has not only broadened my knowledge, but also honed my skills. It's a fascinating field where every case is a puzzle waiting to be solved, and every solution adds to our collective understanding of the digital world. Today, we're kicking off the series with a case that perfectly illustrates the power of digital forensics, the BTK killer, and how a single floppy disk led to his capture. Our story begins in Wichita, Kansas. From 1974 to 1991, a serial killer known as the BTK killer, or Dennis Rader, terrorized the city. BTK, standing for Bind, Torture, Kill, was not just a moniker, but a horrific description of his modus operandi. Despite the severity and brutality of his crimes, Dennis Rader, an Air Force veteran, church council president, and Cub Scout leader, Rader was a wolf in sheep's clothing, managed to evade capture for over three decades, living a seemingly normal life as a husband, father, and compliance officer. Fast forward to 2004, Raider, craving recognition for his crimes, resurfaced, sending letters to the police and local media, seemingly craving recognition for his crimes. Little did he know, the world had changed. This was now the 21st century, and law enforcement officers were becoming increasingly adept at forensic science. One of these communications was sent on a floppy disk. Raider believed the disk would not be traceable, a fatal miscalculation. When the police received the floppy disk, they immediately handed it over to their digital forensics team. The team made an exact bit-by-bit -bit copy of the disk to preserve the original evidence, a standard procedure in digital forensics known as creating a forensic image. This allows investigators to work on a copy, preserving the original disk in its received state. The forensics team began their investigation by creating a forensic image of the disk, an exact bit-by-bit -bit copy, to preserve the original evidence. This is a standard procedure in digital forensics, ensuring the original evidence remains unaltered. They then used a software tool called Encase, a popular choice in digital forensics for its ability to recover deleted files and uncover hidden information. To their surprise, they found a deleted Microsoft Word document on the disk, when a file is deleted, it's not immediately removed from the storage medium. Instead, the space that the file occupies is marked as available for reuse. Until that space is overwritten by new data, the original file can often be recovered. This is a fundamental concept in digital forensics known as data remainance. The team used this principle to their advantage, recovering the seemingly lost file. Upon opening the recovered document, they found metadata embedded in the file. Metadata is data about data. In this case, details about the creation of the document. The metadata revealed that the document was last saved by a user named Dennis and was linked to a Lutheran church. This was the breakthrough the investigators needed. Metadata is often overlooked, but it can provide a wealth of information. In this case, it gave investigators not only a name, but also a potential location. With this lead, the police were able to tie Dennis Rader to the BTK crimes. It's a stark reminder that in the digital world, every action leaves a trace. With this lead, the police were able to tie Dennis Rader to the BTK crimes. Rader was arrested in February 2005 and confessed to all the BTK killings. The BTK case is a prime example of how digital forensics can be used to solve crimes. It's a testament to the power of digital evidence and the importance of meticulous forensic analysis. That's it for this episode of our digital forensics case studies. 
If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more fascinating cases. Remember, in the digital world, nothing is ever truly deleted. See you in the next one.